at benzene and why benzene uh, is the way it is. I want to explain this, uh, this link here to you, this picture. Benzene utilizes hybridization to form the benzene ring. As we just talked about on page 334 of your text, uh, in the benzene ring, there are six uh, orbitals that kind of look like P orbitals. They're actually hybrid orbitals, but they end up overlapping. And I'm um, just going to draw a picture for you here. So a diagram of benzene, a structural diagram, would sort of look like this. There's six carbons in a ring, and they would form, of course, a, a hexagon ring. And you have six hydrogens. Now, if you look at... If you look at the bonds around C, so remember that each of these lines represents two electrons, really, right? And so around every carbon, we have two, four, six electrons. And of course, carbon wants a full octet, uh, you know. And so where does the other, where are the other two electrons in this? And the explanation is that there are, basically there are six of these sp2 orbitals on each carbon. And what happens is these orbitals sort of morph into each other. They kind of form a, um, a localized uh, region here. And you have two sort of donut-shaped orbitals above, the, uh, above and below the carbons, if you, if you want to think of it that way. And so it, it kind of ends up looking like this. Right, and you have an orbital above. And below. Okay. And so structurally, we draw this. And sorry, this is a bit small. Didn't didn't want to expand there before. But um, what happens? What happens is um, there are pi bonds that exist. And if I just blow this up a little bit for you, there are double bonds that exist kind of on every on every other bond here. All right. And then this bond flips over, the double bond kind of flips over to here as well, and over to here, and over to here. And it's basically, it's flipping, they're flipping back and forth. That's why in this diagram, here's the larger diagram. That's why in this diagram here, you see how there's actually a double bond here. And then over here, the double bond has flipped to over here. And so it's kind of a special situation where the double bond flips between different carbon and uh, carbon atoms. And so you end up having, you see the lines there, you have one, two, three, four lines coming from each carbon, and that's how it fills its octet, but it kind of has to share it, okay? So those double bonds are sharing. So this is why you draw benzene like this with a kind of a circle inside the hexagon, which means that it's sort of all happening at once. Those double bonds are flipping between carbons, and it's happening so fast that it's this hybrid orbital, and that's that's where you get this sort of hybrid orbital with the donut shaped above and below, you know. It's kind of like their brand new orbitals have formed yet again. So the benzene ring, you'll often see, you know, this benzene ring drawn like this. The hexagon with just a circle inside. And that is a benzene ring. Formula is C6H6 and it is, um, yeah, it's in a, a ring shape. On page 333, it says, this is a delocalization of the pi electrons, and it's spread among all the carbon atoms, and it results in greater stability. So that's why it does that. It's more stable. All right, so page 176, naming organic compounds. Organic compounds, uh, first of all, organic compounds are compounds that have carbon in it, okay? Organic, from living, um, from living things. Something that's organic is characterized by having carbon in it. So carbon C is a big part of, uh, of, of organic compounds. And there are some very simple, basic uh, organic compound chains, simple carbon chains, and that's what we're going to learn how to, how to uh, name here today. So organic compounds are named using a different set of rules than any other um, you know, formula that we've talked about. It's not ionic or covalent, doesn't use the prefixes. They're named fairly differently. The simplest group of organic compounds are the hydrocarbons. As their name suggests, these compounds are composed solely of elements hydrogen and carbon. And carbon atoms can link to each other in, to form chains or rings. The first step in naming these compounds is to count the number of carbon atoms in the chain or the ring. The stem of the compound name is then chosen. Uh, and um, 
let's uh, let's go through them then. You know about methane, right? <clears throat> CH4 is methane. <coughs> me. And so the prefix here for one carbon is meth. Okay? Meth. The ain is, um, we'll talk about that later. There's methane, um, ethane, and there's also, when you get down to, you know, two or more, there's ene and ein, and those mean different things. It talks about the uh, the bond types between them. So we'll get to that in a bit. But the simplest ones are single single uh, sigma bonds, and they are ane. So methane is CH4. And the structural diagram, you don't have to draw it uh, three-dimensionally. Okay, You know how to do that three-dimensionally. You know that in three-dimensional space, you know, it's not planar here, right? It stretches out in 3D space. But that's the structural diagram. Okay. Ethane. The next uh, the next uh, prefix is F. E T H. Okay. So you've heard of if you guys if you fill up your cars at the gas station you've read on there ethanol, right? Ethanol. Ethanol. The all means it's an alcohol group. That's a type of, of compound. Is an alcohol. And F means there's two carbons uh, involved in this molecule. F ethanol. So ethane is C2H6. And that looks like this. C bonded with a C. And then if you keep in mind that every carbon has to have, and we're all single bonds, right? So they have to have four bonds coming from each carbon. So this is how you start doing it. See there's a chain of now two. There's methane, here's ethane, and of course these are hydrogens here. Okay, so we're just naming simple, simple hydrocarbons chains. Methane is one carbon, ethane two carbons. The next one, if you've ever um, paid attention when you're barbecuing, you would have heard this one before. Propane. Okay, so prop here is the prefix, and of course that's C three. And how many H's would there be? Do you think? Eight, right? Are you are you catching on to what the sort of the math formula is here, or the um, the pattern behind this? <coughs> yeah. Every time you increase a carbon by one, you, you increase the H by two. So that's that's exactly right. All right. So I'm going to run out of room here to draw this. I'll do it in a different color. But propane here is going to be three carbons. And basically, it's just like ethane, except I'm sticking a C and two more H's in there, right? And so you have this happening, that, and that. So just a simple chain, three carbons. They have to have four bonds coming from each carbon, and of course, only one bond from each hydrogen. It's just got one electron anyways. So you see that? So we just, that's right, <clears throat> every time we go up in number from carbon, if you add one more carbon into the chain, just think about adding, you know, carbon here with two more H's, right? That's all we're doing every time. The mathematical formula for that, right, is going to be C and whatever N is, right, what are the H's going to be? Times 2, so 2N. Two plus 2. So you double it and add 2. So if there's 2 carbons, you double that, 4, and you add 2, you get 6. If there's 3, you double it to 6, you add 2, there's 8. So the next one is going to be C, 4, H what? Times 2, plus 2, 10. And what's that? Methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Okay, so you've heard of uh, maybe butane as well, like they have those little butane lighters, right? Just a different hydrocarbon that's, that's burning inside those butane lighters, C4H10. Okay, so I'll let you guys, that's C4H10. This chart was a good idea at one time. But see, see, see. see? <clears throat> Okay, 
So count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hydrogens. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to get you guys to do is from that chart on page 176, I want you to name, give the formula of, and draw a structural diagram for the rest of them all the way up to decade, okay, up to 10. All right, so just go ahead and take a few minutes. Same pattern, uh, just go ahead and keep going on there. So go from 5 to 10. Yep, 7.12 there. It gives you the uh, stem, right? So 5 is going to be pentane, 6 is hexane, then heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. Okay, so go ahead and just complete that, uh, complete your chart that you started here, and draw those out. All right, so <clears throat> we also want to talk about um, cycloalkanes. Now, uh, I haven't talked about alkanes yet, but the family of single bonded uh, carbon chains or carbon rings, if we're talking about only single bonds, the family is called alkanes. Notice we have the ane here. Okay, so cycloalkanes. I've given you a hand out there, and you kind of see that that's a thank you. That that's a, a group. That's a group of uh, organic chemicals is alkanes, right? So the family there, alkane. Now the cycloalkanes have single bonds. That's why they're named anes. Okay, all single bonds between the carbons. And when we talk about adding a prefix cyclo, it just basically means that Instead of a straight linear chain, it's a circle. And we do have, uh, you know, basically the end carbon is attached to the first carbon, which drops off a couple hydrogens, right? So if you think about it, here's hexane. If we got rid of this hydrogen and this hydrogen, then this carbon, right, right here, could bond to this carbon, no problem. It wants to bond to something, it wants to bond to something. It just, it's like a chain and it uh, forms a circle. This is what it looks like. And we add cyclo to the beginning, cyclohexane. So the formulas change a bit, right? There is the straight lane, uh, straight chain formula, and here is the cycloalkane formula. So it's just, uh, if you have six carbons, you would have two times six, or 12 hydrogens. Okay? So you see that's, um, uh, those are the cycles. This is also a cyclo. I know this doesn't look like a circle. I know it's a triangle. But this is a cyclo what? How many carbons do we have here? Each corner is a carbon. So methane, ethane, propane. So you, you would you would benefit uh, yourself if you memorize those stems, okay? Methane, ethane, propane, butane, go on. And uh, this one of course is a cyclo methane, ethane, propane. Okay, cyclopropane. Now this here, okay, is cyclo, one, two, three, four, that's cyclobutane. Now, notice in your textbook on page 336, okay, the, uh, the structural formulas, you do not have to, uh, you don't have to draw all the carbons all the time. Now they they do, um, but they do lots of times. But if you see this, just a square, what you assume is that at each corner there's a carbon, if we're talking about hydrocarbons, and that you know there are the appropriate number of hydrogens that are stemmed off here, but you don't have to draw them all the time. Okay? So cyclobutane, and then if you have this pentagon shape here, that's a what? Cyclopentane, and so on. Okay, and because there's single bonds everywhere, of course you know that you would have uh, hydrogens off each corner, right, and and so on. Okay, so this is what this is, this is what actually they look like. There's the carbon atoms, and here's the hydrogens, right? Just to help you make sure that the formula holds true there. So four carbons, eight hydrogens. This is going to be five carbons, going to be ten hydrogens. So the next thing we want to talk about is the alkene family. We talked about alkanes. Now we're talking about alkenes. The difference, of course, is this um, ending to the word here. And it's an E-N-E -E instead of an A-N-E. Whenever you see an ene, what that means is there is a double bond. Okay? 
double bond. And this prefixes are still the same, but let's say you have uh, something like um, butene. Okay? If you see butene, you know that there's a double bond between one of the carbons. All right, that's what that means, a double bond between one of the carbons. And because this is a chain, okay, so it's going to be a chain, so there's going to be C, C, how many C's in butene? Four, methane, ethane, propane, butane, or right, meth, eth, pro, bute. Okay, so ene. Now, between one of these carbons, either here or here, there could be a double bond. And the reason why I didn't draw one here is because you, if you think about this in three-dimensional space, and it's it's a uh, it's it's a chain that's identical. If you take an identical chain like this pen that I'm holding up, and you just turn it around, if there's no differences between the ends or the writing on the pen or anything, it's really the same molecule, right? It's the same chain. So you could have in butene, you could have a double bond here, or you could have the double bond. Here, those are the only two options. Okay, so we're going to come back to this. Let's come back to this. Let's do something that's completely simple, like ethene. Okay, there's butene. What about ethene? Ethene. So meth, eth, C, C. This E means that there's a double bond between the two carbons. Okay, this is ethene, and we already have two bonds here for this carbon, right? So we need basically two, I'll just draw that more properly. We have hydrogens coming off like this. So remember the octet rule. Each carbon wants to have eight electrons around it. Four bonds. And so this is C2H4. Okay. Now, I said we'd come back to this butene. If there are more than two, uh, well, let's see. If there's two carbons, there's only one spot for the uh, double bond. If there's three carbons, um, there could be two double bonds or one double bond. So how do you know where this double bond is? There's a different way of naming that as well. And that is, if you look on your sheet, uh, talks about one butene. Okay? And this one right here, okay, let's just... Um, let me just take this off here. We'll do the same as the as the sheet example. So if the double bond was in the first position, remember, this is the first position, this is the second position, and this is the first position, again, after the first carbon. Because remember, if you turn it around, okay, there's really no difference. So you have first position, second position. That's all you have. Because this double bond is in the first position, that's why you would name this one 1-butene. So the number in front tells you which position the double bond would be in. So if we had this happening, this is the second position, so this would be named 2-butene. And the few things you want to notice here that's really important. The first one is the suffix, uh, sorry, the prefix of this word. Bute means there's four carbons. Ene means there is a double bond, at least one. Two means, hey, there's the position for the double bond. And so from that name, there's three specific pieces of information to help you draw that structure. Make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, why don't you guys draw... Hmm. Um, why don't you guys draw three hexene? Go ahead and draw three hexene. Take a moment and do that. So there's your there's your formula for uh, or your structural diagram for three hexene. This is the one, two, third position. That's where the double bond is. Third position. Six carbons, double bond.